looking at a practice exercise from page 87 of the textbook, conversions between moles and atoms. So you notice that our starting unit is moles. We are ending in oxygen atoms specifically. What I like to do is I like to figure out what I'm doing before I actually start plugging in any of the numbers. So I know I'm starting in units of moles. I know I'm ending in units of atoms. I know that there are a lot of atoms in a mole, and I know that the specific number of atoms in a mole is Avogadro's number. So that is what I'm going to write over the arrow because that's the conversion factor I'm going to use. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up this calculation. I am starting with 0 0.25 moles of calcium nitrate. What I can first figure out is how much oxygen is inside there. Again, notice that they're specifically asking me about oxygen, so I want to say that for every mole of calcium nitrate, there are so many moles of oxygen. Notice again the way I'm setting up these conversion factors. The unit I want to cancel goes on the bottom. The unit I want to keep goes on top. And if I look at the formula, for every one mole of calcium nitrate, there are six moles of oxygen atoms. Again, that is because these superscripts multiply into the parentheses, so there are two groups of three, six total oxygen atoms. So if there are six oxygen atoms in every molecule of calcium nitrate, that means that in every mole of calcium nitrate, there must be six moles of oxygen, the six to one ratio. But I ultimately want to go to atoms, and as we know, we can convert between moles and atoms using Avogadro's number. For every one mole of a substance, there are six 0.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. A lot of atoms per every mole. So we can go ahead and do this math. Essentially it's going to be 0.25 times 6 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Make sure you can put that into your calculator properly. A lot of students have trouble entering that scientific notation and they end up with extra powers of 10. So practice putting that into your calculator and you should get a final answer. And again, we're only going to go with two significant figures of 9.0 times 10 to the 23rd. And let's pay attention to our units here. So we canceled out moles of calcium nitrate. We canceled out moles of oxygen. So we're just dealing with atoms. So this is how many atoms of oxygen we have. And we can do something very similar for the sodium carbonate. The only difference here is that they didn't give us the formula here, and I won't know how much oxygen is in there until I write out the formula. So sodium, symbol Na, has a positive charge. Carbonate is a polyatomic ion, CO3 with a two negative charge. In order to write that formula, Na2CO3. So when I set up this calculation, start with my 1.50 moles Na2CO3. Similar setup in the sense that I want to get rid of moles of sodium carbonate, and I just care about the moles of oxygen. For every one mole of sodium carbonate, we should be able to see that there are three moles of oxygen atoms, and then the last step is again converting moles into atoms for every one mole 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Paying attention to significant figures here, now we have three significant figures, so if you do this calculation you should end up with 2.0 seven one times ten to the twenty fourth atoms of oxygen.
So again, a few things to think about when you solve these types of stoichiometry problems. Always, always, always have a plan. So do not start doing math until you have a plan. So if you look up here, this was my plan. I know I'm converting moles to atoms, and I know I need Avogadro's number to do that. Remember that Avogadro's number just tells you how many particles are in a mole. We can have Avogadro's number of atoms, we can have Avogadro's number of molecules, we can have Avogadro's number of baseballs. It just tells us how many particles are inside a mole of something. So for every one mole, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. In this case, it was atoms because we were talking specifically about oxygen. Again, every time you do these calculations, you should make sure that your units are canceling so that you end up with the unit that you want. And please practice entering all of this into your calculator. Make sure that you can get all of the scientific notation, all the exponents in correctly, and you're getting the same answer with no power of 10 errors.